The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. You were led here because God knows some things are going on in your life. He knows that the devil's been stealing, been stealing your peace, been stealing your joy, been stealing. And he is saying, if you come and make me your God, your El Shaddai, I will rebuke the devourer for you. Genesis chapter 30. Let's start at verse 27. And Laban said unto him, talking to Jacob. Now understand, Jacob made a deal with Laban that he was going to work for him for how many years? Seven years for who? Rachel, his daughter. Why? He was sweet on, on Rachel. But when he worked for him for seven years and it was time to consummate the marriage, uh, Laban pushed the other one uh, up front. So, next thing he did is he worked for seven more years. Now, what we begin to see here is how long he worked for him. Look at Genesis chapter 31, please, and verse 41. He said, I have been 20 years in thy house, and I've served thee 14 years for thy two daughters and six years for thy cattle and thou hast changed my wages. Come on, help me. <laughs> 10 times. You were not ever intended to work that long at that job and not be rich. Now, the reason why the person is not rich for the main reason is my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. What they're doing is trying to depend on the job instead of depending on the blessing. The blessing is designed to cause you to be fulfilled in every area of your life. Watch this, supernaturally. Explosive growth takes place with the blessing and that's why he can do it day by day. You can get richer and richer. Say amen. amen. Now, Jesus had to come to show them how to use the blessing again. And that's why over in Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 5, he thought, blessed are the poor, for theirs is a, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, so forth and so on. Now, he's showing them and teaching them again on the blessing. Why? Because the blessing is the same thing God used to create all matter, and the blessing is the same thing he put on Adam to be able to make all the earth like the Garden of Eden. And the blessing is that same blessing that came on Abraham that he's to pass on to all his descendants that will cause him to come back to what the garden was like in the beginning of, of, of creation. Say amen to that. So how many years did he work for him total there? 20 years, all right? 14 for his daughters. But what does his wages get? He got, he, he, labor was playing with his paycheck. And, and the devil's playing with your paycheck. The thing about it is without revelation, you can't see it. But see, I can see it. I can see that every time seeing the cost of living goes up and so forth, it looked like soon as you got a raise, everything went up. Soon as you, come on now. So look at Genesis chapter 30 and verse 30. And Jacob says, it was little what you had when I came. And now it's increased into a multitude. And the Lord has blessed thee since my coming. And now, when can I provide for my own house? When you gonna let me go, chief? And he said, what, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, you shall not give me anything. Uh-oh. If thou will do this thing for me, then I'll again feed and keep your flock. Whoa. He said, now I'm going to pass through all the flock today and removing from thence all that are speckled spotted cattle and all that are brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and the speckled among the goats and of the such shall be my hire. In other words, I don't want you to pay me. Just give me some seed. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Folks, that job that you got is nothing but seed. I'm going to say it one more time. That job that you've got there is nothing but C. In fact, no company can pay you enough to live like God plans for you to live. 
See, the world doesn't have this blessing. So they can't take a seed and sow it and it be multiplied. You know, like you can. They, they can't do that. You can do that. So why don't you use your job as some seed? So then you don't have to live at the limitation of what you can make for a year. Why don't you live at the limitation of what you can sow for a year and God multiply it and that multiplication will be your income, not your salary. Isn't this wonderful? Now, don't think I'm up here just kind of blowing smoke on this thing. I'm here telling you how I did it. I had to do this and I had to learn, wait a minute, no man is my source. This job is not my source. And God showed me how to use the seed from the job to meet every need that I had. Say amen. Isn't this good preaching? All right, let's keep going. Can you take a little bit, bit more? All right, so here is Jacob, and now Jacob is now being blessed. And Jacob starts getting richer and richer to the point that Jacob now, over in Genesis chapter 31, verse 1, that he overheard Laban's son saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's has he gotten all this what? Glory. Now, people... Look, think that glory in this particular situation is glory. You know, like, woo, glory. That is, that is not what he's talking about. He's talking about material wealth. So notice what happened next. Now, in Genesis chapter 32, he said in verse 10, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies of the truth which thou hast shown unto thy servant. For with my staff, I pass over this Jordan and now I'm become a two band. So we said, let's look at that scripture in the New Living Translation. Let's just look at this. Now this is Jacob, but Jacob is doing something. He's accumulating. And that's what I told you that the enemy doesn't want you to do. Watch this. I am not worthy of all the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown me, your servant. When I left home and crossed the Jordan River, I owned nothing except a walking stick. Now my household fills two large camps. In other words, when Bill Winston left his place where he was, he left with $200. Glory to God. But he left with a covenant that said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great and you'll be a blessing. All right, let, let's keep going here. So let's look at Genesis 26 verses 12 and 13 again in the message translation. Isaac planted crop in the, that land and took in a huge harvest and God blessed him. Let me ask you a question. What was different about that land? Anybody know? What, what was the unique quality of that environment that he planted in? There was a famine. There was no rain. God can make stuff come up where there's no soil, no rain, no nothing. I got it in the book here. All right. Now, see, see how you got to get supernatural to go with me? All right. Now I'm telling you, stay with me because really, really, because I'm really talking to you black Christians. Yeah, I said it. I'm, I'm telling you now, you, you need this blessing. You need what I got. I got a hold of this. God gave me this for you. Because you're struggling trying to make ends meet so forth. So I'm not saying other people aren't, but he knows that you, you, you know, I'm, I'm looking at things and, and, and the violence and all that. And, and we got to stop that, folks. We got to get that. We got to get that out of the picture. We, the church has got to answer that situation. See, we, we, we can put some schools in there. Come on now. We, we can, hey, folks. 
Don't start me on my, on my little soapbox there. All right, now, are you with me so far? Y'all still with me? I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the blessing. Because we got to turn the, the, the worst communities into a garden. That, that's our job. We got to do that. Hey. All right, so let's go, let's go up here, a richer and richer. Remember, richer and richer by the day. Next verse, please. He accumulated, and I asked you to underline that, didn't I? All right, accumulated. Now, what did I tell you? The devil is a thief. Am I right about it? But Jesus said, I've come that you might have what? Life and have it how? More abundantly. So now the enemy is trying to keep us from accumulating so that we can put a school in this place so that we can have the kids to come and buy them uniforms, books, feed them lunch and everything, and they don't have to pay a thing. They just come on in and come on now because we got, we got to take over this community because God says, I've given you cities. That's Deuteronomy 6 and verse 10 and 11. I've given you cities that you didn't build. Well, give it to me. But when he gives it to you, he's going to give it to you with problems in it. But you are the problem solver. You got the wisdom of God. Come on. You'll have the blessing of God. You'll have the provision of God. You... I'm telling you, they, 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 government can't solve this. They, they don't have no money. The only money they get is off of you. Well, why don't I just do it myself? <laughs> All right, so, all right, let's watch this now. So I got to stop the thief because he's trying to keep me from amassing wealth. He knows if I just got enough to put $5 in the offering bucket that I am pretty much broke and I am harmless as far as his system is concerned. But I'm sent here to take his system down and put another system up called the kingdom of God. Say amen to this. Amen. All right, so let's look at stopping the thief. And where we looked at that last time, we looked at it in terms of this uh, Malachi chapter three. Now, when I start reading this, don't run out on me. All right. Okay. Now let's look at this first. Let's look at this. Joshua chapter six and verse 19. Let's look at that. Now this is Joshua taking the land of Canaan. Now he's taking Jericho. He's taking the land of abundance. But all the silver and the gold and the vessels and the brass of iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So when Jericho comes down, get all the stuff and bring it into the place of the Lord. Let's look at Joshua now, chapter 8 and verse 2. Now the first one was a battle of Jericho, but the second one is going to be the battle of Ai. Look what he says about that one. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king as thou didst to Jericho and her king only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall you take for a prey unto yourselves. Now, my point to you is take the spoil from the first one and bring it to me. Take the spoil from the second one and you got that. Got it? So we call the first one first fruits. First fruits, because in the days of old, they would grow the crop and the first fruit that came off, they came and brought it to the temple and dedicated it to the Lord. Got it? Now, that was first fruit. Now, the reason why he did that, because he knew that the farmer was waiting on this fruit. But the farmer says, I'm going to give this to God. I'm going to honor God with my first and he's going to bless the rest. Got it? All right. Now, so, no, y'all still with me here. Now, Matthew 6, 24, please. 
I'm stopping the, I'm stopping the robber now. I got to stop him because I got to accumulate some stuff here. I, I said, here was the blessing. It was on Jacob, but Jacob couldn't accumulate because every time he did, it, here, here, something happened. Hey, he have to garnish. He, uh, let, folks, I've been there. I was, I was in, we were in Sister Beverly's house trying to get out. Every time I tried to save some money to get our own apartment, something would happen. And even one time, one time somebody put my name on something that I had to pay for somebody's wedding or something who was a relative that I didn't even attend. I didn't even know about it. And the next thing you know, the people calling me asking for the money. I said, money for what? They said, well, you owe us the money. Your name is, I said, whoa, who put my name? I'm saying the devil is a robber. And every time we try to save enough money to get out of Sister Beverly's house, the devil has a system out here that is designed to steal what you've got. Now I'm saying you got to protect it. And this is the way you're going to protect it. Say amen to that. Amen. Say living large. Living large. All right, let's look at Matthew 6, 24, and I'm going to read that. He says this, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate one and love the other or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Let's look at that out of the NIV translation, please. No man can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let's check another one. Let's try the message translation, please. Message translation. Now, I want you to see this because as I'm reading this, I want you to get a picture that it's not about money. It's about your heart. This, this is not about money. Okay? You can't worship two gods at once. Loving one God, you will end up hating the other. A duration of one feeds contempt for the other. You can't worship God and money both. Can't do it. So it's not about money that he's talking about. He's talking about the condition of the heart. See? And so what happened is now we look at keeping this robber from you. Now in Genesis chapter 14, this is when Abraham was told that his, his nephew Lot had been taken captive. Now I told you Lot was a lot of problems because he didn't, he wasn't supposed to go with Abraham in the first place. You know, people talk, can I go? No, stay here, you can't go. <laughs> and uh, so I'll come back and get you. I'll come back and get you. <laughs> and so what's happening now? Now he goes out and fights a battle against four kings of four nations with all these thousands of people and he defeats them. He not only defeats them, but he slaughters them. Verse 17, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after the, he returned from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer of the kings uh, that were with him at the valley of Sheba, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was a priest of the most high God. Bread, wine, priest. King, bread, wine symbolizes redemption. Symbolizing what Christ did, glory to God, and salvation. Say amen to that. So he is now making this this, this confirming this blessing covenant on to Abraham, verse 19, and he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram of the most high God, possessed of what? Heaven and earth. And blessed be the most high God, 
which has delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him what? Tithes of all. Question, was Abram under the law? No, he was not under the law. The tithe came before the law of Moses, but Abram was taught by God that you need to tithe. So what does the tithe do? The tithe is going to open up the windows of heaven. Come on now. The tithe. See, look at the next verse. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. Look what he wants to do. He wants to get the people. Now, two kings meet you when you come with your paycheck. The king of, 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 of Salem and the king of Sodom. And I'm saying that which one are you going to serve? Because you can't serve two masters. You're going to either love one, come on, and hate the other, or else you're going to hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So what I'm saying is it's interesting how the tithe makes you make a decision with of who you're going to serve in this thing that God's about to do for you. Say amen to this. And look what he says. Now, people who are really don't want the truth don't want to hear this because this part here is making people step up to the line and be go public about what they're going to do and who they serve. And I'm saying you were led here because God knows some things are going on in your life. He knows that the devil's been stealing, been stealing your peace, been stealing your joy, been stealing. And he is saying, if you come and make me your God, your El Shaddai, I will rebuke the devourer for you. This is what's going on, folks. And I'm telling you, what you got to do is make up your mind. Now, true enough, it's a lot. You say 10%. I got to give 10%. Listen, it's 10%, but you get the 90%. But even that, God's going to increase you how much? More and more. He's going to, you come under a tithe that's going to make you richer and richer by the day. with God. This is the Bible I'm teaching you. I'm not adding anything to it. I'm reading it. And if you got a problem with it, you don't have a problem with me. You have a problem with almighty God and you need to admit it. Now I'm talking about everybody at the time. The preacher's got a tie. You get in certain places and the preacher don't tithe. He takes tithe, but he won't tithe. That is not scriptural, homie. You've got to tithe. Everybody tithes. Everybody tithes. Tithing is not under the law. Tithing is a law that if you do tithe, there's something that's going to happen to you. Put it up there. Malachi chapter 3. And verse 9, uh, verse 8 first, praise God. Put it up there. He said, will a man rob God? I'm telling you, yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In what? Time and offering. God sees what every person gives. He is, uh, he doesn't have to go anywhere to be everywhere. I am not trying to get your money. I'm trying to get you to the promised land. I'm trying to get you to what God said is supposed to be in your life. And the church has not been there because the church been busy arguing with God. He is not concerned about your opinion. He doesn't care two cents about your opinion. He knows you can't serve two masters. 
Oh, I'm preaching better than you said, amen. You ain't got nothing to lose. You can't get them kids some clothes now. And yet you're going to get offended when I start talking about the tithe. Because you want to go somewhere where they ain't talking about it. Preach. Well, I'm, I'm not done with it. I got some other stuff for you. I'm, I'm almost done. <laughs> Boy, this is, see, I, my wife came to me one time. She said, uh, we got married, you know. She said, sweetheart, um, I was just noticing now, I was putting our tithe together, but I noticed do you, you're tithing on your gross or are you tithing on your net? I said, why, why did you ask me that? Now, I'm, I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad about it. Watch this. Why, why are you asking me that? Well, I, I tithe on my gross. I said, well, that's you. <laughs> see, 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 you see what I'm saying? It's a heart matter. It ain't the money. God knows it's not the money. It's that do you trust him as your partner? Yeah. Jesus died to provide you with the very best of everything. Learn how to desire and receive His best in your life with Dr. Winston's teaching, Living Large. To order this dynamic message, contact us online at BillWinston.org or call us at 1-800-711-9327. Deep within you, there is a call to lead. Distractions have tried to bury it. Criticism has tried to smother it, but the call remains. And now it's time. Become an entrepreneur. God is awakening the call again. Answer it. Take a leap of faith. It's time for you to change the story, not just for you, but for your neighborhood, your community, your city, your world. At Joseph Business School, we are here to equip you to guide you, to empower you, to step into the call that God has given you. It's time to launch out, begin a new story. The call is clear, the time is now. Become an entrepreneur. Every day, ordinary people are given the opportunity to do extraordinary things, a chance to come together, share the love of God, go into all the nations, heed the Great Commission, put our faith in action, and change the world. At Bill Winston Ministries, we've been called to the nations and are committed daily to praying for you. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7 reads, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And here at our new Bill Winston Ministries Prayer Call Center, we believe in the power of prayer and the power of partnership. The new Bill Winston Ministries Prayer Call Center, one body of believers with a heart for God and a passion for people, ready to stand in faith and pray with you.